let's check out the built-in LFO. This is a new from Ableton Live 10. Now it's in built-in in the core library. It's a Max for Live device. So an LFO, um, I don't even want to say the term, but I'll say it. Low frequency oscillator is probably one of the most common terms outside of the music production industry. Like people who don't uh, produce know it or deal with synthesis. Uh, but what it does, it just allows us to add movement to kind of wobble things or even randomize uh, in all sorts of ways. And we actually have LFOs everywhere. Uh, like in Wavetable, of course, we have two LFOs here. We have, if we go to audio effects, there's so many audio effects with LFOs built in. Auto filter, here's the LFO. Auto pan is actually a dual LFO that uh, just moves left and right. And uh, everywhere, even in the, let's go like delay, here we have an LFO to modulate the filter and the timing of the delay, flanger, LFO, even more sound design like corpus. You get the idea. We get LFOs everywhere. Uh, but those are built in. Those are routed to specific things or in matrix. You know, there's a limit to what you can route it to. Uh, so now under PAX, core library, <coughs> devices, audio effects. And if we go to max audio effect, Right here, we can find the LFO. You can also search for it right here under Max for Live. LFO is going to be under Max Audio Effect. I have a few of them. Okay, nice. Here's the LFO. So the LFO, again, it's just like any other LFO, but it's modular. It's just a separate device that we can map to anything. So first, of course, we can map it to Ableton's instrument. I'm going to just click Map and click on, let's say, the filter. So now we just map there. Uh, we can map it to Ableton's effects, like let's say a compressor. Let's click the X to cancel that. You can map it here. Of course, also MIDI effects, whatever you want to map it to. That would be weird, but let's try that. Whatever. Right? That's just weird. But uh, anyway, you can do that. And we can even map it to plugins. So let's load a plugin. Um, let's go with like a small plugin. Like, uh, let's try this. Just a delay plugin from Native Instruments. And if I open up the configure section right here, we can see all the parameters of the plugin. So let's, for example, move this. Here it is. It's right here, the delay time. So I can also map that. And now it's also changing the plugin. So uh, that's awesome. And by the way, if you're using plugins like huge plugins, like synths and stuff that are just have too many uh, parameters, let's load something here. Like the old school Massive. Although Massive X is amazing. But let's load the old school Massive. Uh, so this old school Massive has a lot, a lot of buttons and knobs and faders and such. So what we want to do is we actually can open up the configure section, turn on configure, ignore this. This is my pre-saved configuration. It should be empty. So click on configure and then just move whatever you want in the synth to be visible to Ableton right here, turn off configure, let's click map, and now we can see, uh, we can even modulate or use the LFO for any plugin we want. So let me actually undo that, all of that, so we can go back to uh, our wavetable. So we said we can uh, map it to uh, instruments, effects, and even plugins, but we can also map it to some um, interface elements like even the scent knobs, I can map it. Or I can also map it to panning. Nice, let's cancel that. So let's go over the controls of the LFO, because it cannot only wobble up and down, just in this wavy motion. It can do many more things uh, in different ways. So first of all, right here, we can map, of course. Let's map it again to the filter of our uh, wavetable. And right here we have the speed of the LFO. We can synchronize it. So now it's just in time divisions. Um, we can change the depth of how much the range of modulation is. So we, as, as I turn it down, we're going to see it start focusing in the middle. And then if we don't have the depth all the way up, we can also offset it where we wanted the actual center point to be. 
Uh, phase will change the starting point. We can see it's make it faster or slower because it's actually moving where the LFO starts. We can hold it. And we can also re-trigger it. You can click on that and re-trigger the LFO. Uh, but that doesn't work when the transport is playing. So right now my project is playing. Retrig doesn't work. Uh, or reset. Nice. Now right here we can actually select different uh, wave shapes for the LFO. Uh, which will change how the modulation is moving. So that's going to become very interesting. For example, saw up, saw down, triangle, which is similar to uh, sine wave. It just moves faster in the, in the uh, edges. Square, just uh, open, close. And now the depth will really make a difference, or, or will be more obvious. And then we also can randomize. Let's speed up the randomization. Let's just jump in up and down. Nice. And lastly, we have bin, which is kind of like just a random gate. Open and close randomly. It just randomly. Nice, now let's go back to random because we have a few other things here. So here we can jitter, jitter is just going to shake it. And smooth is actually going to smooth it out. So right now we see that our modulation is just jumping around. We can actually smooth it out and now we can see it glides to the new destination. Still random. You can even shake it if you want. So jitter and smooth, very cool uh, additions here to the LFO. Let's go back to like uh, down, let's synchronize it. Put it on like eighth note. So something a bit more rhythmic. Let's take down the smooth. Tiny bit of smooth. Nice, now right here we have another kind of depth amount uh, where we can set the minimum value and the maximum. You can see the filter only focuses on the bottom end. Or if I take the minimum, only focus on the top uh, frequency range. Uh, we can even open up a list here, and now we have seven other destinations we can map it to. So let's map it to a few stuff. Maybe even a set another filter, let's put it in parallel. Let's uh, decrease this so we can see we have uh, amounts, minimum, maximum for each uh, parameter. Now, if you want more than eight, uh, you can check out our other video about multi-map. allows you to basically map to as many destinations as you want. But uh, CPU can be demanding here. You can see I'm on almost 50% CPU just with one wavetable and LFO. Nice. Now, uh, you can also uh, add another LFO or other type of modulators we'll talk about in other videos and start doing kind of a, let's put it on random, um, kind of doing cross-modulation, kind of uh, modulating the modulators. So let's take uh, this random, let's smooth it out. Let's speed it up. Let's map this maybe to the, let's start the depth. We still have that movement of eighth notes, but just the amount of modulation of the eighth note is now randomized thanks to a different LFO. So LFO it can be amazing. That's uh kind of turns Ableton into a, almost a modular environment with all these devices. And you can, of course, incorporate plugins, anything you want. So explore, that's the LFO. You can LFO anything you want. Quite amazing. <laughs>